That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about A Thousand and One, the directorial debut of A.V. Rockwell, which premiered at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, where it won the coveted U.S. Uh, dramatic prize, the, the top prize of this film festival. Uh, it is being released courtesy of Focus Features on March 31st, 2023. You've seen this movie twice now. Yes. Uh, I thought it was very good. Mm -hmm. It's one of the better things that... It's, it was in my top five favorites of Sundance this year. I think the performances from almost everyone are really great, but Tiana Taylor, I think, does such a great job. I was so surprised. I, I mean, I'm unfamiliar with her outside of music videos, usually. Uh, but, you know, she does some voice work in Enter Galactic, and we saw her in Coming to America. But uh, I, I was kind of unprepared for how impressive and excellent her performance is in this. I but. feel like if they gave Michelle Williams uh, an, a nomination for The Fablemans, I feel like they have to give Tana Taylor one. I agree, <laughs> and, I, and I think Focus Features should have waited a bit to release this. I think that there could be a campaign for her, and I don't know, maybe they thought it would be you know, lost in the mix in September, October, but yeah, I think she's really deserving of that kind of a campaign. I'm going to read the basic synopsis. After unapologetic and fiercely loyal Inez kidnaps her son Terry from the foster care system, mother and son set out to reclaim their sense of home, identity, and stability in a rapidly changing New York City. So that makes it seem a little more basic than it is. I would say the weakest part of the story to me is that there is a lot going on, um, and I wish we could have pared it down a little bit, particularly the gag at the end. Sure. But So Inez... Tiana Taylor. The film starts in 1994 and she is serving time at Rikers Island. When she's released, she goes back to Harlem where she's from and she sees her son, who at that point is six years old, played by a kid named Aaron Kingsley Adetola. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that like he's accustomed to his mom leaving unexpectedly. But at a point, Little Terry, her son, hurts his head, so he's in the hospital. And she shows up, and it's clear that maybe she shouldn't be there, but she's visiting with him, and he basically says, like, why, uh, why do you keep leaving me? And then she has a moment where she decides she's going to take him. So that's where the kidnapping from the foster care system comes from. So we spend some time with her and Terry trying to build a life together because she's effectively homeless with no job. She does hair, but I think she ends up getting a job working in like janitorial services. She also has an ex named Lucky, played by... William Catlett. Do I know him from something? Uh, we reviewed Charm City Kings. He was also in a... Uh, he's in a bunch of TV stuff, but he was in a movie last year that I haven't seen I'm interested uh, with Michael Ely and Omar Epps called The Devil You Know. Uh, so those two characters kind of get back together. They move in together into a low-cost apartment she finds in Harlem. And they get married. And Lucky even tells Terry, like, I promise I'm going to take care of you and your mother. It's also important to know Terry doesn't know who his father is. Okay. Then we flash forward to 2001, mm -hmm. where Terry is now 13, played by Avon Courtney. Mm-hmm. And things are going well. Like, Lucky and Inez are still together. They still live in this apartment in Harlem. Terry is a good kid. Like, he's performing well in school, so much so that his mom is called in, and they want to speak to her about him potentially going to, like, a magnet school for, like, gifted students. Terry doesn't really want to, but she convinces him to take the test she promises him she promises to buy him a pair of air jordans i think he takes the test and he gets in and then he has to decide if he's actually going to do it then we fast forward four more years so like 2005 and now terry is 17 played by josiah cross mm -hmm. and he's doing well in school it's about time for him to apply to college but this is where everything comes undone mm -hmm. because a lucky over the years, it sounds like he's had a propensity to like sort of vanish mm -hmm. from their lives. Tayana's struggling because she works this... I, it, it, I got the sense she still works the janitorial job and she's working overnights so she can keep an eye on her son. They still live in this apartment in Harlem. But then another side plot is about gentrification mm -hmm. and how they're kind of being like 
shadily kicked out of their place. The, the political landscape of the city is kind of going on in the background. Because there's a lot about Giuliani trying to clean it up and then Bloomberg coming in and then we see some landlord sort of buy the building across the street and now you have people with a different complexion moving in who clearly pay more, which is important to the story because it would appear that Inez and Terry, her son, need to move out. So Terry agrees to get a job with the help of his guidance counselor. And she's like, well, since you're, you know, going to work like a real job with me, I need your documentation, your birth certificate and your social security number. And we know in the beginning of the film that because Inez kidnapped her son, she got fake documentation so they wouldn't track his ass. So when he gives the documentation to the guidance counselor, she comes back and said, with the, a social worker and two police officers, like, I'm sorry to break this to you, but the gag is, Inez did kidnap him at six years old from the hospital, but Inez also kidnapped Terry when he was two years old. That is not her son at all. <laughs> she has raised him, but she did abduct him when he was two. So that's a big bomb that's dropped. Mm -hmm. And then the last 10 minutes are sort of, Terry's world caving in mm -hmm. and then he and then his mom like flees because she knows she's in trouble but they do have one final moment where they come back to their place to pick up some stuff and they happen to bump into one another and she basically says to him that she feels like she did did right by him because he's turned into a good kid mm -hmm. and she really did love him and he has a heartbreaking line where he says like where's my like, where's home for me now? And they walk out to the street. Inez jumps into a car. And as the car drives off, the driver says, where are we headed to? And then the screen goes black. Mm -hmm. There are so many good lines in this script. It's very well written. Mm -hmm. I do... I'm just going to say right away what I think. Like, I, I really like the story. I just wish that maybe it would have been sort of shifted, like... I wish she would have just taken him from the foster. I I don't know. I, I just think that knowing that she abducted him and then abducted him again and she's not really his mom felt like a lot. And maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe they didn't know that they were going to get such a powerful performance out of Tiana, but I feel like she could have carried a more simple plot on her shoulders. Sure. Yeah. Because that lady was giving mm -hmm. all the feelings. Mm -hmm. So when you combine that with all of the things happening and then like we have her boyfriend Lucky who, because uh, he dies of cancer. So that's another thing added onto that. And then he got some lady pregnant across the street. Then that's another thing. Then there's this aspect of colorism that's brought up more than once. Oh yeah, that's going on a lot. Which too. these are all valid things, but it just feels like a lot when it's like, I don't know that I needed that because all of the young men playing the three versions of Terry, plus Tiana Taylor, plus she has a friend um, named Kim, mm -hmm. Inez does, who we meet in the beginning because Inez is homeless and she calls her friend Kim to help her with a place to stay. I mean, that works so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with uh, the mother, Mrs. Jones, played by Delissa Reynolds, who was uh, had a small part in the Halle Berry movie, Bruised. I thought she was really good. She was really good, but also kind of obnoxious because it's clearly she, clearly she doesn't like Inez. <laughs> For good reason. I mean, Inez is the troublemaker. But that's where Terry Abney plays Kim, and that's Kim has a really good line because she has to leave the Joneses' residence because she pushes Mrs. Jones. Yeah, Inez pushes Mrs. Jones. And then when... She, uh, Kim is talking to her outside. She's like, when are you going to learn that you're enough? And it doesn't matter what anybody says. Yeah. So, like, why do you let it get to you? Well, and I got emotional because Kim seems like a real friend. Mm -hmm. Like, girl, I see your ass is crazy. And, <laughs> like, can you just calm down? Mm -hmm. And she does end up helping all those years later. Terry, you know, we only see her in the beginning, but then at the very end when Terry is basically, like, back in foster care at 17 about to turn 18 in like three weeks we see him call kim mm -hmm. and she's like i'll be right there so yeah i mean i really like that characterization but uh tiana's got so many good lines though about uh, talking in the hospital with lucky about how broken people don't know how to love each she other she says damaged people damaged don't people know love. how to love each other yeah so many good lines and her 
you know, sometimes I criticize like Jennifer Holiday and Dream Girls. I felt like she was just playing herself. I feel like Tiana Taylor is really acting. Mm-hmm. Like she really is like pushing um, outside of what like what we know her as. Yeah, she's playing kind of like an around the way girl who's been in trouble in Harlem. But it, I don't know. It felt like a fully realized character. It did. And it she's did. so like compelling on screen. She looks amazing. She does look amazing. Yeah. And she's not distracting because her body is like outrageous. I mean, she's so ripped and lean with these. I'm assuming breast implants, but somehow it works. Like somehow she looks. Well, we're not, I don't feel like we're ever really focusing on her body in, in this too. Somehow we're not, even though we see her body a lot. We like do. You but, see her in mid-drifts and... But it's, it, it, it's never occurring to me that any kind of statement... She's just exists or trying to exist in this movie. Um, and, and I like her monologue a lot at the end when... Because it's so... When Terry shows up to pick up some stuff and accidentally runs into her and she's just like keep it moving they probably already got to you it's like whoa uh can we talk for a minute and she has she gives this really great model you mean the end after when Mm -hmm. terry when when the jig is up Mm -hmm. she he walks in on her in the apartment grabbing some of her stuff and she acts like um i just found out you're not my real mom right can we talk about it for a second and she doesn't want to (laughs) and but you know and that whole spiel she gives about how you know, I saw somebody that needed me, but maybe I also needed you. I don't know. It I, to me, all that was very beautiful. I just wanted more Tiana. Like, like I wanted more Inez and her story. So I think that's why I wish the we we could have dropped some of the stuff. I feel like I didn't even need Lucky as much as I liked that I did actor like and his performance. I I would have given him up to just see this mom and her son get through but there was it was this chosen family though like because even in the beginning she's like i know you don't know your dad but i got somebody in mind it does work it all works very well i just i mean i guess i just wanted more sure but in a good way and i do like the gentrification metaphor that's going on as well that of course basically implodes right above their heads in this apartment with this landlord that does them extremely dirty yeah uh that that was a common thing i just read parker posey's memoir and she talks about that that was a thing going on too um which is just so frustrating but then there is a sense that the film does beat us over the head with it because even this uh, young woman he meets that he takes out on one date who of course is also the, the element of you somebody mean terry that terry takes this young woman out on a date in that element of people are always going to be leaving him. But even her, her, her rationale for leaving to move to Florida is because of uh, some white guy screwing her uncle out of the deed to his house. And it's like, okay, sure. Her name's Simone. I like that character. Yes. She works at a restaurant that Terry visits, we see from like when he's a younger teenager to the end. And he has friends who are kind of like reprobates. They're assholes. Simone doesn't like them. They're annoying. But Terry likes her and he keeps calling her, trying to like get her attention. And you can tell that she doesn't like him either. But one day he finally builds up the courage to say like, can, like, like, can I talk to you? And she says, fine. And they go on a really nice date. I thought that was a really lovely scene. Mm-hmm. There's some, like every moment's really lovely and or powerful or funny. Yeah. Um, but and adding a lot to it, I think, is a really fantastic score by Gary Gunn, whose previous work I'm not familiar with. But especially at the beginning and the end, it has this really kind of tremulous quality up to it that even kind of reminded me of 50s era Cirque films. And I don't know, it 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 just accented it, I don't know, kind of perfectly. There could be a game for every time Inez, Tiana's, ta- Tiana's character, is eating yeah. or cooking food. Or cooking, yeah. It, it's constant. She is constantly eating something or buying something to eat or making food. I think it's really funny. It's such a huge character trait. And notably, this was produced by Lena Waithe and executive produced by Oren Moverman. I don't know. The um, A.V. Rockwell has directed a lot of short films. I, I think has had a lot of experience uh, in, in shorter format. But yeah, this was really impressive. Tiana also, because we span, what, like 14? No, like nine years. Mm-hmm. And I think Tiana, like the transformation from when we first meet her to the end, like the makeup and the, makeup, the how styling. She, how she moves. Works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I did think Lucky looked, I mean, I wrote down when I first saw him, like, how old is he supposed to be? Because <laughs> he seems significantly older. Like, he'd be in his 40s. 
when we first meet him. Sure. So that was a question I had. Another plot point is that Terry is go in this magnet school for science. So potentially, I think like they want him to be an engineer, mm -hmm. and he says like I'm not interested in that. And his little girlfriend, like the first date girl, Simone, is like, well, what what do you want to do? And I got the impression that as the audience, that's supposed to be like maybe the first time anyone's ever asked uh -huh. him. Mm -hmm. And we see that he's kind of interested in music, which was a little bit of a weak spot because we only see it after his dad, uh, Lucky, gives him a box of music. Mm -hmm that he says he wants to be like Quincy Jones. He wants to be a composer. And I thought that was interesting. I, I kind of felt like that needed a little bit more attention. There are hints at that because when he's... The scene where she leaves him as a six-year-old in the apartment. That's right. Quincy Jones is on TV. Mm -hmm. There's something going on about Quincy Jones on TV. Um, so th to suggest that this kind of has been deep-seated, but yeah, just nobody's fostered... Allowed him to foster that. I would highly recommend this movie... I'm super impressed with Tiana Taylor. I would watch this director, like this director's next film. Mm -hmm. What would you give it? Uh, oh, and the poster art I think is pretty damn good too. Uh, three and a half. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>